life is really unpredictable. It was summer 2015. After feeling so courageous for having had my blood test done, I discovered I had breast cancer. Everything can change from one day to the next one, but believe me when I say that whatever happens, no matter what, you can do always something to enjoy your time, and everything is temporary. After the, the, the diagnosis, I, um, I learned to let go of things, starting with my holiday. Actually, after my first chemo, I ran away and spent some days in Florence. I let go of many things, and I learned to be patient as well. I didn't even know what patient looked like. Every single relationship has been proven, and also my memory has been proven. You cannot imagine the number of pills you have to take every day, and fortunately, my grandmother was there, ready to remind me to take my cortisone. I was always forgetting about. And after, even with all of that, I, I feel lucky, because the treatment was long, but at the same time, it wasn't. So I had time to focus on myself, to get new boobs, as I always say, <laughs> and uh, to go on not understanding what to do with my life. So, at the moment, I have this notepad on which I write every single idea about what to do when I grow up. After my surgery, I started running, and at the moment, I run three half marathons. Before the cancer, I wasn't a runner at all, but I ran in Rome, Amsterdam, and in New York. I was so happy about it, <laughs> and who could have said that that person could have ever done something like this? Who could have said that something like this could happen to me? So even though I was strong throughout all my treatment, as soon as the treatment was over, I started feeling lost. I didn't know where I was going with my life, and I was asking myself what I'm doing except from working in my pyjama in my bedroom. Because I work freelance, and it's, uh, like it's, it's really great, I mean, but it has its pros and cons like everything. So I had many scary thoughts, and then I decided to buy a flight for New York. I had no plans except the first five days in a hostel, and my flight for coming back three months later. So I was open for everything. So what would happen in between the hostel and the flight, I tell you. Like one week later, I arrived in the city. I was part of an exhibition in a Brooklyn gallery with my photographic project about breast cancer. A couple of days later, I found myself in Mexico. No idea why, don't tell me. <laughs> So I spent there one week. After that, I was back in New York, and I was walking around every single park, looking at the beautiful Manhattan skyline. And I felt small, but at the same time, I was part of the city where everything was happening. There, I was almost selling my camera. And then I signed up for a photography class for two months. After a couple of months, it was almost the end of my trip, I found myself in California, and I did so many things. <laughs> and I found myself on a bus, on a bike, and then on a boat. It's been great, and who would have imagined that something like this could happen to me in just three months? So even with all of that, I mean, there have also been times where I had a tough time. I was facing the fact that I was there all alone, and I didn't know where I was going the day, of the day next, so I was confused. <laughs> and I faced so many thoughts about life and death, and I found this article about how life can be hard, especially for young people after cancer. So I tried to feel normal, and I wanted everything to be not about cancer, but just about living. And for this reason, I started thinking that we're always ready to say everything happens to me, but that it's, not, it's true, but not just for the bad things, also with the good things. We are free every day to do something we never thought about before, or something we've always thought but we never did. So it's just enough to take care of other people, to take care of what surrounds us, to enjoy every moment, every city, every event. I don't know. Who amongst you doesn't leave our great city, our great Milan, and spend a couple of days away and start complaining as soon as it's time to be back? 
In that moment, we have, we have to ask ourselves how many people come from faraway places to see how many wonderful things we can see in Milan, we can visit. So, when I left Italy, I started this photographic project. It's about all the people I met on my trip. I decided to call it Humans Along the Way because it collects all the story of the people. And I began just like, it began like just a challenge with myself because I wasn't sure about how to deal with my story. I wasn't sure if I should tell people I got cancer, but my way of doing it was like, hey, I'm Christina, I got cancer, how about you? So it was <laughs> maybe not the best way. And other time I was hiding completely the problem. And extreme ways are never the best. <laughs> so the more I was taking these selfies with people, the more I was curious about other stories, the more I was learning how to relate with people and with my story as well. So I want to speak to you about some of them. It's been hard to choose just five of them, but <laughs> I tried. He is Pedro, and he's one of the main examples I can speak about for saying that life is really unpredictable. I met him in Cancun, in my trip in Mexico, and in the hostel. After a couple of days, I decided to go to Tulum, and while visiting, we bumped into each other. And I was like, oh my god, what are you doing here? We talked a little bit, and then we went on in different directions. After other three or four days, it was my last day in Cancun, and I wasn't sure about what to do. I decided to go to Isla Mujeres, and it's been really hard to get there. I mean, the bus wasn't coming, that I had problems buying the ticket for the ferry. Once there, the guy told me, hey, today everything is closed because there's too much wind. And I was like, oh my god, what I'm doing here? So I decided to walk around, and I walked aimlessly from one beach to the other. And I just lay down under some palms. I fell asleep with my face covered, and when I got up, Pedro was lying beside me. And I was like, are you kidding? What are you doing here again? So <laughs> it was great. And She's Anita, I met her in Cancun, and she's a shiny human, and she, she's so happy telling you her story. She had a tough time, but after that, she found love in Said. And this man just moved from France to the US and happened to live next door to her. So they met, and her, her mother was always telling her, you will find a man you won't afraid to dance in the street with. And she's so happy telling you that no matter what, you'll find the love of your life, and that's, that man is Said. And that's, she's Natalie. I love Natalie. And she's from California. She actually met her through Instagram, because when I got cancer, I was looking for someone who was sharing in a positive way my same story. And this wonderful woman was amazing, so I just texted her, and I decided to connect with her. Last October, I was in New York, and she happened to be in New York as well. So we met. And then, a couple of weeks ago, I was in New York, and I decided to book a flight for California, and I went visiting her. It's been great, because I had the, the opportunity to meet her, her family, and her friends, and I went with her around the city. We did yoga together and many things, and we found ourselves sitting on a boat, speaking one to each other and about how important it is in life to reach out for other people and always be open. Just If you think something nice, just say it, because you never know where it brings you. And she's Fabiana. Uh, Fabiana is lovely, she's from Italy, but she's been living in the US for four years now. And it's strange because we met in New York, but we have something like 20 friends in common in Italy. So <laughs> I was surprised about it. And we have so many stories to share, and she, I think we can talk for hours and hours. And that's another story that makes me think that whatever happens in life, there are some people we are meant to meet, and someday we will meet them. And he's Mark. 
markets from Wicklow, and, uh, which is one of the best places in Ireland to me. And um, I met him in Cancun, because when I arrived, I was walking around, around no sense with my backpack. I didn't know where to go, and he was walking in the same way. So <laughs> I just decided to say hi, and we started talking. And after a couple of minutes, I don't know how, we were into a really, really personal conversation. So it's been a lot. <laughs> and I can, go on for, I can go on for hours with these stories. I had more one, than 100 stories, so I think I can stop here. <laughs> and I want just to just tell you that no matter what, be open to whatever life has to offer you. As someone told me in California, don't fight the flow. And be curious for everything, for, with everyone, because everyone has something to offer to you, and you have always something to offer to other people. I'm going to leave you with this quote with, of Sartre. I suppose it is out of laziness that the world is the same day after day. Today it seemed to want to change, then anything, anything could happen. Thank you. <laughs>